Hello and welcome back fellow PowerShell engineers. We are now going to create our first module and this will be a custom module obviously since we're creating it and while custom functions can be easily utilized on their own it oftentimes be may be more suitable to package them in a module especially if you intend to use your custom functions across different scripts and also if you don't want all of those functions to build up at the beginning of your scripts right like maybe i don't want to define 20 different things up here when i need to call them over and over again and quite honestly this is the best practice for if you're building kind of a larger project in PowerShell and you want to share it with other people, um, granted my disk cleaning script is not very large, but I still made it as a custom module so it could be used that way, right? And that way you could also modularize my custom functions away from my graphical user interface. So if you import that module, you don't necessarily have to use the graphical user interface I made with Windows Forms. You can use the custom module and just invoke the disk cleaning script uh, or the disk cleaning function itself, um, say in a scheduled task, if you want to use it that way, that kind of thing. So we already have our function from the previous section. So let's go ahead and utilize it again. And what we're going to do is actually do a control X, pop it out of here. We're going to make a new file. I did a control N to do that. And we made a new file here. I'm going to save it just as a PS1. We're going to call that test SpaceX. And we can now go back to our script and actually use import module. We're going to use the dot, which in which I'm sure we've gone over at this point, but in any file system, uh, it's going to refer to the current directory. And then we'll do the test SpaceX module. So we're going to go ahead and import that. And now if we give this a whirl, damn, we are still pinging SpaceX over and over again. And somebody's probably wondering why, <laughs> but not probably not, but it's that easy to create a module. I mean, a module is more or less just another PowerShell file that you're importing, right? So let's go ahead and take it a step further and kind of make it more officially a module. And the way we'll do that is by, we need to be able to see our file extension. So we're going to change the file extension of that PS1 file. So we're going to go to File Explorer Options. Good. If we go down here and uncheck that extension, hide extensions for known file types, we should be good. So if we go up here now, we can see the file extensions. We see our module. And all we need to do is make that with a series of clicks, no double clicks, single clicks to get in there. You need to make that a PSM1 file. And it'll ask if you want to change it. Just say yes. And now IAC isn't caught up to know that this file isn't there. Right? That's the PSM1 file. So let's go ahead and close that. And then we got to change our reference to, right? Because now that has a new file extension. So we go ahead and save, squeegee, and we'll give it a run still works just fine but as the system knows even though it doesn't have a good icon for it it's a script module you see that the system now knows that this is a module so it's really that simple to make a module now if we go ahead and open up the module file what we can do is actually best practice is to use the export module member to define which functions we're exporting. So you export module member function. You test SpaceX, it already picks it up. Twice. We we'll actually just close that out. Again, not really gonna change the functionality. Go ahead and press play. This is still working, no problem. But we now have a clean, more cleanly defined uh, module file, right? So go ahead and open a new uh, PowerShell window. And what we can do is actually what we're going to do is make a new test domains folder. So let's go to our folder. 
And what we'll do is the new item command. We'll just say the path is here, dot again. We're gonna name it test domains. And the item type on that will be a directory. So again, we're starting to get it more into how we're going to package our file there. And now what I want to do is actually move the module. Oh, we're going to move our Oh no, no, we want to call it test SpaceX. So I goofed up there. Uh, let's make this Let's just make this called test SpaceX. Now we'll move our, I guess I could have done re rename item. <laughs> I'm going back and forth here from PowerShell and PowerShell class. Uh, we'll move our test domain or our test SpaceX PSM. We'll move that into our test domains, our test SpaceX folder. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm saying domains, I'm getting goofed up. All right. And of course, we could validate this as well, but you'll see that it's there now. Very cool. So now we can build what's called a module manifest. And the way we do that is we make a, we use the new module manifest commandlet. And we're going to do a path. And it's a SpaceX, gosh. And we're going to name that test SpaceX PSD1. All right, now let's go take a look at what just happened there. It's a Windows PowerShell data file. Yes, code. And look at all the stuff it made here. <laughs> it's got our version, the ID that we used to make it, a copyright statement, and all sorts of other things we can do. And this is what really kind of makes the module more, more officially a module, right? So we could go ahead and fill all this stuff out. But this is sort of the last step is filling all this out. And then you could take this whole thing and uh, post it on GitHub and everybody will be super impressed at how complicated you made a ping. <laughs> but no, seriously, that's how we did it. Uh, that's how I did it with uh, my disk cleaning script. Just like this, I have a manifest file. Any module you see is going to have one. So in not too much time, you learned how simple these really are. Uh, some really key commandlets. And uh, that's, that's about it for functions. Let's move on to uh, the next lesson.